Hello, everybody. How are you doing? We are live. And I think this is going to be an exciting mix, well, at least it is for me. We'll see uh, how long everyone stays around for. Um, I've got it live on the High Pass Show page and also on my uh, Facebook page, my David Dominey Fowler Facebook page. I'll also be uploading it in its entirety and clips from it to YouTube after the stream. Um, and I've also started a watch party on my own wall. So um, hopefully everybody knows. Um, what I'm going to be doing today is mixing an old song of mine. It's a song I wrote, I think it was about 20 years old. I remember writing it with an acoustic guitar, an old Epiphone acoustic on my mum and dad's uh, back doorstep when I was still living with them. So maybe I was 19. I'm not sure anyway. Somewhere around that age. Um, and I recorded it when I was 27 at my friend John Paul's studio in Germany. Um... And yeah, myself and my friend Jan and my friend Sai went over there. We were a band. We recorded the song. And then since then, I've updated some of the guitars because, you know, artists can't stop fiddling around with their own music and stuff and trying to reinvent it. And I had done a mix and I was quite happy with the, the mix. But um, I've decided to release this song and in the future, many others in their full multi-track um, form. So... You'll be able to download all of the multi-track for this. Do your own mix, play about with it. Um, feel free to strip all the instruments off it and take the drums and write a whole new song over it. Do whatever you want. I'd be really interested to see what um, what people do with it. Um, and it's also so if you watch one of my videos, you've got the same files and you can mix along at, uh, at home or in your own studio. Um, and please send me what you do. Um, I'd love to hear it. So yeah, the purpose of this video is... I'm going to uh, do it entirely using um, IK Multimedia plugins. Um, IK Multimedia are a great company. Um, they make some wonderful things that I've already used in previous streams, like the, the Leslie and, uh, and Amplitube and the B3X. Um, they're, they're fantastic, uh, fantastic plugins. But um, I haven't used many of their audio plugins, like their EQs and their compressors and reverb stuff like that. So in this stream, I'm going to try and remix again the same song um, that I've given the multi track away for, only using their plugins wherever possible. There may be a couple of things that their plugin set doesn't cover that I need to use someone else's plugin for. But if there's the choice to use IK stuff, I will be using IK stuff. Um, so let me just change the scene so you can see my desktop. Um, here's the uh, IK Multimedia website. So these are all the plugins here that I will be using. I'm not saying I'm using all of them, but I will be picking from this range here, which is the um, t rex 5 Max um, bundle. Um, and I've also got a photo here of the recording. And you can see here the the live room and the drum kit. It's um, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it, the the kit itself was a Tama Star Classic. It's got some beautiful microphones, a lovely sounding room, and you'll hear all that. But before um, I waffle on any more, because uh, I can waffle on, um, I'm going to just play the song. Of course, I haven't got the song open, have I? I've got the... Uh... <laughs> uh, there it is. There's the song. So I'm going to play the whole song through so you can hear what it sounds like um, with the mix that I got to um, before I kind of exported it all um, to do a new mix. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to mute my mic and here we go. It's a mystery to me why I shouldn't tell you the way that I'm feeling right now. I thought you should know that I can't seem to find how I'm gonna sleep with my dreams seem to keep you in my 
find So that's the song. Um, I hope everyone likes it because uh, I'm going to be using it for a few videos to do different types of mixing. Um, let me just close this now. So if you download after this video, if you um, download the multitrack from the Dropbox link and drag it into whatever software you're using. I'm using Cubase here, but you could be using Logic or Pro Tools or anything else. Um, you'll end up with a load of WAV files like this, which I've kind of color coded and put in an order. But at the moment, nothing is done to them. Um, it will sound nothing like what I just played you. Everything's just, each track is sitting at 0 dB, pan to the center. And if I was to play the chorus, for example, it's gonna sound pretty horrible. So yeah, <laughs> that's what an unmixed track sounds like. So during the course of this video, um, I am going to mix this using the IK Multimedia plugins, the T-Rex stuff. Um, go through track by track, EQing, compressing, um, and we'll see how far we get before my ears get tired. Um, the reason I chose this track to do it is because it's got a lot of... Um, 
it, well, the drums were recorded particularly well. I've got a lot of different microphones, which is lovely. Um, but I've got a lot of other options, like I've got a bass DI and two different cab mics. I've got acoustic guitars in it. I've got uh, five different electric guitars. I've got a real Hammond with the horn and the bottom mic'd up. And I've got um, sort of single lead vocal in the verse, but then double, tripled up vocals in the choruses and backing vocals. So it's... Um, it's got a lot of stuff that you can play with. So I think as a learning exercise to learn new plugins or, or, or just kind of do a mix of something to learn, um, there's a lot of depth to it. So um, I'm going to start with the drums. I'm going to start by muting everything on here. Um, and just start with the outside bass drum. So... Right, so I'm going to make some groups. Let me move my microphone. I need to get into action mode now. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to make some groups. Um, anyone who's ever watched any of my mixed videos before knows how I like to um, group stuff. So I'm going to make four. How do I, I need... Um, I don't need to group the overheads because they're already in a stereo file. So I want to make three groups for the drums for now which I'm going to drag up to the top. Uh, and I'm going to call the first one Close Drums. I'm going to call the second group Trash Drums. I'm going to call the third group All Drums. And for now, we're just starting with the bass drum out, so I'm going to send that to the Close Drums, and we'll have a listen to it. Let's have a listen to the uh, the bass drum inside. Again, I'm going to send that to the close drums group. So, obviously, the inside bass drum mic's got a lot more slap to it, and the outside's got a lot more depth. I want to see what their phasing's like. So if I, um, if I play them together, do they cancel each other out, or um, do they add up to create something nice? Let's have a listen. If we go to the mixer... Put one out of phase. Clearly there, they were perfectly in phase, which is good. Um, so yeah, I'm going to uh, start by EQing the outside bass drum mic. Um, so I'm going to go to my inserts. Now usually I'd use something different, but I'm going to type in TR5 and only see what I've got here in terms of EQ. Um, I saw this one last night that I was playing out with, the Equal. Um, which looked really nice, enabling me to just kind of notch out the odd, uh, notch out the odd frequency here or there. So let's uh, let's set a high gain, a really narrow cue, and sweep along and see if there's any horrible frequencies that I need to remove. Oh, there's a ringy one there, around 127. One thing I really like about this plugin is the fact that it's not got um, all the bands on there. You can kind of click and add a band or remove an EQ band. Um, and that's really nice. Uh, pretty much every other plugin I've seen, um, they're all there. And then when you're not using them, they kind of litter the screen a little bit. And that's uh, not particularly pleasant. So I'm, I'm impressed with the layout of this plugin. All right, let's, uh, where was I? Yeah, 
get around 800 hertz there's a whistle let's add in a third band I can hear something up here something around there make that a little bit wider okay now I'm going to do something that's a bit more musical I'm going to um, uh, find some some mud take that out I want to find where my fundamental is on the bass drum There's a bit of a ring there actually. I'll pull that out. Mm. Ah, right, no, sorry, I've picked the wrong one. That's the one I wanted. <laughs> I want to do a high pass and then a low shelf. Interesting, as I boost it, it cuts. I want to bring out some sort of click. That's kind of whistly around there. A bit higher up. Okay, that sounds nice for now. Bit of EQ on that. Um, let me uh, go to the inside bass drum now, repeat the process. I'm not as fast finding these plugins because I've not used them as much. Get a nice slap on that one. But I can hear a break up where there's a tiny flam. It's almost at the at the top end where you get the slap. I can hear like a double tap. So I want to take out some um, top end frequencies. But this, I'm not even going to look to get the bottom end on this one. I'm just going to. Um, <clears throat> High pass it. The default high pass on this is pretty uh, pretty violent actually, but I quite like that. That'll come in useful on the bass. Um, so I'm gonna put a low pass on it as well. So I'm really just trying to get that slap. Let's go back to this one and take out some of this that I've put in. In fact, that might be unnecessary. I might just uh, Right, a um, bit of compression, but it's time for some compression on these things. So, what shall I use as a compressor? Again, something from the IK range. Uh, 
Now, I'm a huge fan on all sorts of things of the the 2A, but um, usually I'm going to try the uh, I'm going to try the bus compressor on it because that's something that I would use from other vendors. And I think this I was doing a comparison last night, and this just had a little bit more warmth on the bottom end th there one. So um, yeah, let's see whether this sounds nice. I want to have quite a high attack, auto release. I just want it to tickle it. Four to one ratio. And I'm going to go to the top end of the bass drum and put. Um, same compressor on it. It's only a left. See, I'm assuming that these are a model of an SSL um, bus compressor, which is one of my favourite compressors. Because this is more the top end, I can have the attack. attack a little bit less. Right, I'm getting some nasty wooliness on that. I think I need to add in another. Yeah, so I'm really getting the bottom of it. Oh, that sounded good. So this is the outside bass drum. Hmm. I'm going to go with that for now. Um, I should turn the gain down to the uh, close drums group because once I start putting too much stuff in there, that's, um, well not too much, but once I start putting loads of stuff in there, um, it's all going to start to digitally clip. So I'm going to down the gain to that group by 6 dB. Um, <coughs> I'm going to turn it up a little bit for you all to listen to. Hang on. Because um, it will be very quiet otherwise. Right, I'm happy with that. I'm not gating anything at the moment. I, I think um, I'm not going to need to. So let's move on to the snare drum top. Oh, there's some horrible rings on that. Snare. So I'm probably I'm gonna pull this wave up a little bit, just artificially boost it by a few dB. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting a peak in the loud bits around minus six, which is kind of what I'm looking for. Um, so again, let's get the EQ up. You can see here there's a big ring going on there and I'm imagining I can, I can see it with my eyes and I hate mixing or EQing with my eyes but I can see it um, <laughs> ringing on the screen there and I'm sure that's where I'm going to find the, uh, the offending frequency. So let me send this to the close drums group. Off a bit here. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, just a little bit of that out. 
cleans it up. Let me uh, put a high pass on it. Something a bit more musical. Oh yeah. Yeah, but again, 800 hertz. It's a lot of 800 hertz, so I want a little bit more snap on it. So I'll put in another band. Okay, that's a nice start. Uh, I should just say, um, I can't see any comments unless you're actually watching and commenting on the uh, High Pass Show page. If you're watching or commenting in any of the watch parties, um, then I can't see what you're saying. So if you've got any feedback, please do comment. I've got the screen open here. Um, but it will have to be, uh, the comments will have to be written on the High Pass Show page stream for me to actually see them. I want to see what this Black 76 sounds like. It's not something I'd usually use on a snare, but I just want to hear what it sounds like. Subtle for what I'm uh, looking for. Try the classic comp. Compressor again. You're watching me learn all these plugins in real time here. Hmm. a good place so I want to listen to that again. Yeah, if I have the attack time up then um, uh, then you get more of the punch through um, which is lovely. I'm going to compress it a bit more and turn up the ratio. into the snare bottom. This is the right page for comments, Aiden. <laughs> I don't want it to sound like St. Anger. But I think once we got the bottom mic in and, uh, and all the overheads and room and everything in, uh, it will sound a lot better.
Right, so let's check the phasing of those two mics. So I've got the, um, that's the top and that's the bottom. If I change the phase of the bottom, yeah, it thins out. So I think when we record it, we did check all the phasing. So the raw files are all in correct phase. Right, I'm going to move on to the uh, overheads now. The overheads and the rooms and everything on this just sound beautiful because that room was was gorgeous. If I pull up the photo again, you can see it was a really um, lovely sounding room. The overheads are very close together over the top of the snare, exactly how I like it. Um, the front kit are uh, is a pair there, um, right in front of the kit. Um, and then the rooms are actually, the room mics are on the floor, um, kind of in a, in a omni pattern. So they're getting the proximity effect with the floor and then the rest of the room. That wasn't, um, a decision that I made. It was another engineer that, um, set those up, but, um, they do sound great. So I think with this, a lot of the sound is going to come from these overheads and these room mics. <laughs> so. None of it is particularly harsh. We've got a load of mud down here. I've got some more. Lovely. I'm just going to put a high pass on that. Right. Now I'm going to try their model of the uh, of the two A, um, the LA two A compressor, because this is my favourite compressor by far. It doesn't work on everything, but for um, particularly group things and <coughs> acoustic guitars and whole groups of drums and stuff, I just love this thing. And sometimes vocals, depending on what I'm doing. Um, yeah. You can really compress this and it still sounds quite transparent. I don't want that much, but... Hmm. Now I'll go back to the EQ. around here that's a bit harsh. Put that back in. Yeah, it's lovely. Okay. So you can really hear there with those um, with those overheads configured as they are. I mean, they're like uh, like that, right above the snare drum, um, really close to each other, and uh, you get so much more weight from the drums that all the drums feel like um, they're one instrument rather than lots of separate instruments. I'm really not a fan of overheads where they have them far apart and they've you know to me that's lovely it picks up all the symbols great but there's no 
guts to the drums and um he was actually being on tour with Deep Purple in 2004 um looking at their live engineer setting up two U87s over the top of the kit and I'd listen each night and hear this drum sound that just sounded like a sort of an ambient acoustic kit and you could hear all the parts of it um without it being just sort of close mics and cymbals from the overheads and that's it and and it really changed my uh, view on how to do overheads and um the fact is I've just got sort of bass drum snare drum and overheads in here and you can really hear the whole kit um I mean, I will use the Tom mics, but there are recordings out there where the Toms are not as loud as that, you know? I mean, that's with no Tom mics in at all. So with that as my basis, I'm going to send the close drums to the all drums group. And I'm going to send the overheads as well to the all drums group. And now we have all our drums coming through on here, or at least the mics that I've actually used so far. Bring those overheads down a touch. So what I want to do is bring the overheads down a little bit because I've still got other room and other bits that I will probably put in at different points. Um, but um, I want to then put a, a subtle sort of compressor over the whole all drums group. Um, I'll put it a bit, I'll put it in insert three in case I want to do any other EQ or anything beforehand. Um, and I'm going to use the uh, the bus compressor. Somebody once told me they put the microphone under the snare. They sound much better from above. Yeah, um, I've got uh, in here, I've got a top snare mic and a bottom snare mic. Um, sometimes the top snare mic can make it sound a bit like a timbali. It doesn't have any... Um, snariness to it so I like to have a bottom snare mic a little bit in there not too much of it but enough to let you know it's a snare and then of course the overheads uh, with that will um, yeah the overheads with that will fill out the sound and make it sound like you're standing in the room with the instrument which is kind of what I'm looking for um, where was I I'm going to put the um, the bus compressor over all the drums the attack right up. I really don't want it to do much. I just want to tickle it very slightly. Maybe 10. There we go. That's better. Okay, and now I'm going to try and hear they've got, a, I noticed they had a Pultec, um, a Pultec model in their EQ, which is fantastic. So I'm going to try this out on the whole drum group. Have they got any presets? I'm not even looking at presets at the moment, but they haven't got a, uh, a drum preset, so let's see. See where I'm boosting. Boost at 30 and also attenuate at 30. And a little bit of top end. what it was so this um, <clears throat> the real physical piece of equipment the uh, the 
Paul Tech um, EQ that this is modelling um, is just absolutely fantastic for um, trying to sort out things which are basically just kind of like bottom and top end. Um, and they've got this kind of unique thing where you boost the frequency and then you also attenuate the frequency. But because they've got um, different cues on the boost and the attenuation, you get this... Uh, um, fantastic um, you get this fantastic effect uh, where it really tightens up the bottom end and can tighten up and take out some harsh frequencies in the top end as well um, there's plenty of videos out there I was thinking of doing one um, with a Paul Tech EQ and showing you the curves but then I looked online and there's you know loads of people doing it showing you EQ curves that the Paul Tech EQs come out with so I'm really pleased they've got a, a Paul Tech model um, and I have actually used this uh, in the mastering of the Broom Sisters album. I actually used this plugin um, pretty much on every single song, um, and it was lovely. So I'm going to put it over all the drums. And it really tightens up that bottom end. So I'm boost and attenuate. Probably a bit much. Okay, one thing I'm going to do that I haven't done yet is I'm going to change the um, tempo and everything. Um, this is a fixed tempo song. It doesn't change at all. It's 92 BPM and um, it's in 6.8, which I can sure you can hear. Uh, for those of you that are not musically minded, that means we're counting six eighth notes per bar. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, instead of the more normal one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So uh, I've just changed the time signature in Cubase for that. So now Cubase will follow um, all the bars properly. So if I... which is going to be great if I want to do any editing and trimming up of the files and stuff like that, to have it all snapped to the grid will be, um, will be essential. Right, for now, I'm just going to leave that as the drum sound. I know we've just got bass drum, snare drum, and overheads in, um, but I'll put in some other bits and pieces as and when I need them. I'll probably kind of bring the room mics in in the... Um, Oh yeah, I'll put the room mics in in the in the verses where it's a little bit more subtle, but I think these room mics are huge. And they're going to be messy for the chorus, particularly it being a 6-8 song as well, so it's got a certain kind of washiness to it anyway. Um, so I'm going to move on now. Um, oh, actually, you know, I'm going to do the trash drums thing. What am I talking about? Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send via a send, because I've got the close drums there, I'm going to send via a uh, send to the trash drums, and I'm going to make it pre-fader, so it doesn't matter what I do with the fader of the close drums. Um, it's going to ignore that and just send it to the trash drums. Um, so, so if I was to also get the overheads here, I'm going to send a little bit of that also to the trash drums. Uh, what? So the fader there is at minus 13. I'm also going to send this at uh, minus 13. I also need to put a limiter or something over my master output because I don't want it to clip, um, but I'll do that in a second. Um, so in this trash drum group, if I turn the overheads completely down and the close drums completely down. We're just going to hear this trash drum group now, which is basically a mix of the overheads and the close drums together. But then I'm going to put the, um, the LA-2A 
simulator over it with a huge amount of compression, way more than I'd ever use usually. I'll put a little bit of EQ before that as well. So I'm just taking out some of the some of the low mid. And then we'll send that to all drums as well. And now um, I can mix some of this in via snare bottom. Have I not got that? Go ah, I've not got that going to the close drums. That's why I could hear that. Um, and now if I put my close drums back in, I'll put the overheads back in. And now I can bring the trash drums up. And they're just like some super compressed, over-the-top compressed drums that I'm just kind of mixing up in a parallel fashion. So we're, we're kind of parallel compressing the drums and then just mixing in a little bit of them. That's what it is without the trash drums. And that's with the trash drums. I think that's sounding pretty nice myself, and that's just um, bass drum, snare drum, and overheads. Nothing else. What a fantastic uh, room that was! And to be honest, it's Jan's playing as well. He he um, hits drums really hard. Um, he's but then when he when he does certain rolls on the snare, he can be very sensitive. Mm. Hang on a second. Facebook had paused the stream, so I wasn't seeing any comments. Ah, Laurie Wells. Hello, Laurie. How are you doing? Um, okay, let's have a look at the uh, at the bass. So I've got a DI here of the bass. Um, that level doesn't look that loud, so I'm going to turn it up. That's the four per ten on the mic, and that's the one per fifteen. Okay, so I'm going to do the kind of normal things that I do, but I already have the mic signals, so um, I don't need to run any kind of uh, amp simulator over the top of a DI because I've already got some mic uh, mic signals, which is lovely. So first thing I do on a bass DI. Um, well, in fact, before I even start in the instruments, I'm going to create a new group. So for anyone who's not seen me do a mix stream before, um, something that I think is really, really important is to make a group, which I call music, and I send everything except the drums. Obviously, there can be exceptions, but in general, everything except the drums gets sent to the music group. Because I find that as I bring more instruments in, the drums get more and more lost. And then it's easy just to go to one group and just turn the whole thing down. Or if I want to EQ the music differently to the drums, it's just just having a, a music bus is, is a really useful thing. Um, and every now and again, I'll forget to send something to it and just send it to the stereo out. And then I'll be sitting there turning the music down, but the vocals won't be going down or a particular backing vocal. So that would be my fault. Um, so comment if you see me not send instruments to the music group, because that will be a pain. Um, let me go to an EQ, TR5 EQ. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to bring up this here, and I'm just going to high pass and low pass. So we'll start with a... Uh, a low pass at around, I'm going to go for sort of around 70 hertz. 71 seems to be where it wants to stick at. And I'm going to go for a, um, a low pass as well, which I'm going to, 
I make around 80 hertz. So we're getting this tiny little notch there. I do want to round them out a touch. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm really getting just the sub. Oh, it's very quiet. Is there a... Oh, I don't want that. Um, I'd like there to be a master volume. There's not. Okay. Um, so, that's very quiet coming out there. Um... Be loads of dialing back on the threshold. Then I'm trying not to use any other plugins. I could grab a different plugin and turn the gain up a bit afterwards, but I'm trying to only use the T-Rex stuff. And I'm sure there's something that would uh, would do it, but I'm quite happy working like that. I'll just pull the threshold back more. So this is bottom end, so I'm going to have a higher attack time. The release time was fine. I'm going to go for a 4 to 1 ratio because I want it to compress more. So that's all the nice sub coming through from the DI. Aidan Campbell says, I think every engineer mixes the drums first. Very rare to see one who mixes the bass first. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because um, <clears throat> there's one very, very famous engineer um, who actually mixes all the music without the drums. He wants to get the whole thing to sound good without the drums, um, unless, of course, it's a really drum-led song and then kind of put the drums in afterwards. Um, I believe that's Alan Parsons, uh, who recorded Dark Side of the Moon, and he learned that from some people at Abbey Road that um, worked with the Beatles and other such acts, and pretty much he said that all the Beatles albums were kind of mixed without the drums in the mix, and then the drums were put in afterwards at the last stage because they wanted it to sound clear and have all the vocals right with the music and everything. So... Um, very odd. Um, I've never worked at Abbey Road and um, I've never had anyone like that showing me anything. But um, I did watch an interview with him where he said that and I thought that was very interesting. And that may be something I do because this being my song, I can do as many mixes as I want and I can play about with it and do all different style mixes. So maybe that would be a good thing to do for another video where I start um, start mixing the music and then put the drums in at the end and see whether the overall sound is any better for it. Um, so good uh, good point there, Hayden. That's uh, give me an idea for another stream. What I want to do there, because you can see I've got the fader at 0 dB and it's kind of peaking at minus 14, so I'm going to really turn up that makeup gain there. Um, I do want to find a plug-in. I really wish this EQ had a had a, a volume control on it, um, a master output. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there is a button I need to press or something. Um, and it's it will appear, but... Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, let's not um, worry about that for now. Okay, so the, when the bass gets loud, the sub's coming down. That's nice. So um, I'm going to ignore the 1 by 15 because that was a bit more bottomy. I'm going to start playing about with this uh, 4 by 10 so I need to send it to the music group.
so I'm going to have to uh, high pass this. That's all I'm looking for is that real top end stuff. Sort of, well, I say not top end, sorry. Um, sort of like high, uh, basically anything above about 400. I don't want any of that low mid in there. See, again, this is where I'd love a just turn the whole thing up, which I suppose I could do if I did this. They've got this great... Um, I could match that like that, which is um, quite interesting. I suppose I could... Uh, I meant to do that one. I'm still learning these, so forgive me. just gain it up like that I suppose it wasn't quite what I was thinking of doing anyway now that obviously sounds completely horrible on its own and I'm not expecting any of you to um, to enjoy the sound of that because it's got no bass in the bass but um, let me do the bus compressor again on it I must say the one by fifteen, I think, is sounding more, more smooth. I'm going to copy those plugins over to the one by fifteen and try that instead. Um, uh, so I'm just going to move them over um, and mute the four by ten and unmute this one. Send it to the music. I don't want to use them all. We'll just be. Uh, I'm going to boost uh, the level on that so that it's um, hitting the compressor a bit harder. Um, seeing as I can't boost it that much on here, it's hard. Okay, yeah, somewhere close. 
and I'm listening to that and there's no Tom mics in it or anything yet. <laughs> you know, where this is still way off uh, a drum mix or even like the bass where I want it to be. But it's sounding, um, sounding very nice just with the little I've got in. Okay, I'm going to move on to the acoustics now and I'm going to create a group for the um, acoustic guitars. Uh, acoustics. I'll send both of these to the acoustics group. And then I'm going to send the acoustics group to the music group. And solo them. So this um, guitar isn't doubled. This guitar is um, just one guitar, but recorded with two mics. I haven't got a photo of how it was recorded, and I can't remember. Um, the signal looks very hot as well. Um, if it clipped, I can't do anything about that. So um, with the acoustics, I'm going to do kind of the same thing as I did with the drums. I'm going to add uh, two more groups. Um, uh, I'm going to call it Acoustic Trash. And then one that takes both of those um, and puts them together. So we've basically got the acoustics going to acoustics. And then I'm also going to send... Um, I'm now going to send, uh, but, uh, hang on a minute, um, acoustic, um, final, I'll call it acoustic final. So we're going to have, that's the raw acoustics. In fact, I'm going to call this raw acoustics. So that's my acoustics coming there. I'm going to send this to the acoustic trash channel. Same as I did with the drums. And then I've got the raw acoustics and the trash acoustics going to acoustics final. And then the acoustic final is going to go to the music group. Whew! Just run that over again, just in case no one followed that. The acoustic left and right are going to the raw acoustics. Then the raw acoustics is being sent to the acoustic final and also to the acoustic trash where I'm going to do some processing. That's also being sent to Acoustic Final, which is being sent to Music. Um, so if I just turn down the Acoustic Trash for now, I can get to the Raw Acoustics and, um, and just do a little bit of EQ on this. Eight hundred again, I hate eight hundred. You can hear something whistling around up here. Let's 
see it there. So I'll turn that down, turn the acoustic trash channel up, which is just getting a copy of the raw acoustics, and I'm going to slam this with a uh, one of their white 2As. Just turn it up full. I'm not trying to preserve the sound. <laughs> I just want this to crunch. playing on uh, acoustic guitar is not fantastic, particularly when I was in my mid-twenties and so that's just the acoustics on their own but then we put that trashy one which is really heavily compressed I'm getting a frequency I can hear like a horrible nasally thing. Around there. Right, and on the final, I'm just going to have a, a um, some kind of, what's the stealth limiter? Quad limiter. I'm assuming the quad limiter is some kind of mastering tool which is doing four band compression. <laughs> Wasn't quite what I was looking for, to be honest. Um, I'll go with the bus compressor. So when it's doing these quiet bits, I don't want it to compress much at all, but then when it gets heavy, um, I do. So here it's compressing much more than it was here. Okay, I need to um, turn down my stereo out here. I've reduced the game by... Um, 4 dB. these a little bit I don't want them dead left and right I'll start dead left and right but I generally don't want them that wide um, that's far too wide 40 each side is fine so 
Sounds like I gave up playing the strums at that point. I'm a little bit harsh there at the beginning, so I'm just going to go into the wave of that. And turn that down a touch. It sounds to me like um, I was playing nice and soft and then I played really loud and uh, Max, who was the engineer, just grabbed the gain and turned me down a bit. <laughs> so I wasn't going to clip the input. Yeah, much smoother. Now that doesn't jump out. Um, that's good. not great but there's uh, other instruments that will cover it up Right now I've got some. Uh, now I've got the acoustic in. I'm wanting to hear some of this room, um, so I'm going to send that to the all drums group. I'm not going to put that in the trash drums. That would get really messy. Um, but I want to hear some of this. Just maybe a touch. Tom mics. I knew we'd get round to needing the Tom mics. Um. They do sound very nice without much done to them at all. Remember everyone, I know this is a repeat from earlier, but if you want to comment and want me to see your comment, please watch uh, and comment on the video on the High Pass show page because that's the only set of comments I'm looking at. If you're watching it via a watch party or on my personal wall or on the IK Multimedia um, shared post or whatever, um, I'm not going to be able to see your comments. So, um, yeah. No, oh, I'm doing the hi-hat. <laughs> Don't want to do the hi hat. Hand them. Yeah, I mean, I could EQ, I could compress them, I could do all sorts of stuff, but I think because the toms were sounding so nice through the overheads, I just think um, they just needed a tiny bit from the close mic, so I don't need to do much more than that. Tom that's conflicting with the bass. Yeah. So, mm, right, so I need to EQ that out. Because that's uh that's putting the bass guitar out of phase on the main um 
on the main phase. Hello, Nick Marnie, how are you doing? Um, <clears throat> maybe uh, for a second I should look at some of these comments if people have been commenting elsewhere. Um, I don't want to just delay the uh, stream too much, but... Just in case... Um, just in case anyone sent me anything useful and I'm missing it. They could be... Uh, Oh, I can't get to the comments. I'm not going to pause the stream. So it doesn't matter. Comment on the uh, High Pass Show page. I was going to have a look for some comments elsewhere then. That was how long my attention span was for that. That's better. Now I'm getting the hit, I'm getting a little bit of bottom end, but it's not just flapping all over the place. A little bit of flappiness there. I've got to say, this is a very interesting experience for me because I'm mixing with stuff that I'm not used to mixing with. So some of my workflow is the same and some of it's different. And I want to go and grab tools that I know will fix things that... Um, that I'm, I'm deliberately staying away from um, but it's making me listen in a new way so there's no um, is it, this is an interesting mix um, from my point of view anyway might not be for you <laughs> um, so here we go I'm going to get some guitars in there some uh, electric guitars in there so I'm going to start with G2 um, which is which is out of phase for a start. So this is pretty normal. Um, if you recall guitars, and I like to recall guitars with uh, 57 and some kind of condenser, um, and usually they'll come in out of phase depending on the position, but even if you've, if you've got them sort of lined up pretty well against the amp, they'll generally come in out of phase. As you can hear, if I put them in phase, or at least what the software sees as in phase, they're out of phase. Wrong channel. Yeah. 
And then you swap the phase and they're not cancelling each other out. I've got a whole video on why you need to check the phase on my YouTube channel. I'm not going to go through um, phasing again, but um, things cancel each other out if they're not in phase and that's why you always need to need to check and these guitars are clearly out of phase. <laughs> Right, because it's two mics and I want to control them with one fader, I'm going to group them together. I might as well make uh, five of these groups because I've got five electric guitars on here. This particular track was... Um, <clears throat> this particular track was recorded with the gold, gold top 335 that you can see in the background there. Um, it's very nice. I love that guitar. Um, there's a lot, and I mean a lot, of um, 3K stuff going on um, just because of where I'm recording it in my place. So, I mean, I'm expecting to have to lose a load of stuff in the 3K area. Anyway, let's uh, send the two Guitar 2 channels to guitar to group and then send the guitar to group to the music group. Here we go. <laughs> now even though this is a mono guitar it's recorded with two mics and you can kind of get a pseudo stereo by panning them a little bit. I'm not going to pan them much but just sort of 28 each each side and it will kind of give them a feeling of a little bit of stereo. <laughs> That's the harsh stuff that I'm talking about. Let me find the center frequency of it. Yeah, two and a bit K. what it was. And gets rid of some of the mud as well. Cool. Um, right, let's make a reverb send. I want to put some reverb on these guitars. Um, I'm going to create an effects channel and I'm going to use the uh, one of the T Rex reverbs, obviously, because I'm doing everything with the T Rex, but I'm going to use the, uh, the Sunset Sound Studio reverb. Um, I was playing with that last night. Um, and it was sounding really nice so because this is on a send I just want the 100% wet I'm not interested in the dry signal at all um, and then I can send to it here
Hmm, that's a lovely room sound. I just want to up the pre-delay a bit. I want to move the reverb away from the initial note. Now I don't need to have as much of it. Yeah, so I can turn it down and you can still sort of hear it between the bits. That's nice. Right, I've got this um, G1, which is my kind of clean Telecaster. I say clean. Same thing, phase issue there. You're definitely going to hear loads of 3K on this. Um, because it's the same amp and same miking setup and everything, I'm going to copy over the settings from the other channel just to get a head start. Listen to that whistle. It's painful. Um, this will no doubt need some compression as well. I'm going to find the whistle. hear that whistle in there. I'm going to do some panning on this. Again, we've got the uh, the two mics on the guitar, so I can kind of create pseudo stereo um, with that. So I'm going to I'm going to pan a little bit more than the uh, the heavier guitar was. Um. <laughs>
just expanding the, uh, the window of the sub. Maybe not that much. Right, I've got some little sort of incidental lead bits here going on on guitar five that I'm going to bring in. <clears throat> uh, so this needs to go to guitar five. That also needs to go to guitar five. And guitar five needs to go to music. And I'm going to need to swap the phase on one of them. Guitar five condenser. And that's going to need the same kind of EQ as uh, this as well. It's a good starting point because it was all the same amp, same mics. So what I want to do on that is, um, again, I'm going to pan them a little bit for some pseudo stereo. And I'm going to put a tremolo over it. Now, this is the only point, I think, where I'm going to step out of the um, TR5 stuff. Because the only tremolo, or at least the only thing when I type in tremolo, is the one built into Cubase that I've got, which is perfectly what I want. I want it on an eight triplet. So. Can you hear there with the tremolo, the volumes going up and down of the guitar? some reverb. If anything needs reverb, that does. Right, so the only guitars I haven't got in are my kind of um, my big chords in the chorus, which just go left and right. And I've got Hammond I'd rather put in first um, before I start filling up the left and right with guitars. So, yeah, this is nice. Because <clears throat> um, this is a real Hammond. Let's see how far I get with all this today. I've noticed it's... Uh, just gone seven over here, and I have a, a Zoom call at eight. So let's um, just try and get as much bulk stuff in 
and I think I'll be coming back to this um, maybe tomorrow and uh, finishing it off. Listen to that. Isn't that beautiful? No MIDI or anything like that. That's actually me playing on a on a real Hammond. Um, let me find a picture from the session. Actually, um, come on, load. Um, it's all on my website. So uh, photos. There we go. This is from our recording session. That is the the Hammond there that I was using and me when I was 27 um, with some silly streaks in my hair God knows what I was doing um, but yeah I believe that probably um, I don't know whether I was actually playing this song because I did a few Hammonds across the album but it was, certainly would have been that day and just listen to it it's just got a sound I mean I've also got a bottom mic here which I'm definitely not going to use because that just sounds like mud. I love watching the EQ curve, uh, the, the EQ spectrum analyzer as well. It's, it feels like it's dancing. Cheers, Nick. And here's the important bit, because now I've got all that in, it just feels like the, um, the drums are being swamped out. So I'll just go to the music fader, because I've sent everything to music. Apart from the reverb, of course. 
I knew I'd missed something. Let me send the reverb to the music group as well. It's the moment of truth when I turn that down and see what I've missed. Um, now I can't find it. There it is. Going blind. Right. too much problem in with it. So, um, <clears throat> obviously I'm doing a little bit of a solo at that point on guitar too, so I want to lift that up a bit, so it's... Um <laughs> I'd like to get an, uh, some kind of delay over that. So um, I noticed yesterday they had a very nice uh, tape delay. Um, there it is, tape echo. It was at the top. I've scrolled right to the bottom and it was already at the top. So um, I only want it on on those bits, but let's have a listen to it. <laughs> Okay, so is this, um, okay, I'm going to run this in a, in an effects loop instead, uh, an effects send. It's not, I mean, I might be missing something. I'm trying to act quick and just do a mix rather than sit here and pause and read everything about every plugin, but um, oh, no, about 420 BPM, I think. Or should I BPM sync it, actually? 
Yeah, so um, I'm going to send to that delay. Okay. So what I want to do is... Go to my sends. Um, so I want to automate the level of send to. Um, so it's basically at that level for those bits and then off the rest of the time. Cool. So it just puts a bit of delay on that. A little bit too much. Um, what am I doing? I wanna Get the um, yeah, just make it a little bit shorter. That's nice. some guitar I played over that on G1 which I'm just going to cut out because I think it sounds like crap. I think I was just bored and I didn't want to just stand there and wait for the next bit to come around. I couldn't be bothered to go and press stop and then press record. So I just played along just in case I wanted to use it and surprise, surprise, I don't. Okay, to my ears, it's getting a little bit messy now. I need to, um, I'd usually have a break from it. and But I'm just going to get in a few other bits and pieces um, before I finish this stream. I've been going for almost two hours now. Uh, so I'm going to leave the DIs muted for now. I'm just going to pull in this G3, guitar three and guitar four. Hang on, let me bring the groups down. <clears throat> So I'll tell you what, 
I don't need two groups because they're the same thing just in stereo. So I will delete um, guitar. I'll make this guitar three and four. How about that? That's going to save some time. Um, oh, I've put the group in the wrong place. Sometimes I confuse myself. I'm easily confused. Remember, if you want to comment, you have to comment on the uh, High Pass Show page stream. I won't be able to see it if you're watching it via a watch party. So if I haven't got back to you, I'm sorry, I can't see your comments. Um, and these I am going to pan dead left and right. So all of G3 left and all of G4 right. And I probably need to switch the phase on the microphones as well. So... G3 um, condenser and the G4 condenser as well. Um, and then I'd see send guitar three and four to music. I didn't mean to get the pull tech up. Although I'm sure that would sound great. Okay, very quickly, I'm going to run through the vocals because as I said, I've got about half an hour before I've got a Zoom call. So um, that's all starting to sound pretty nice. I mean, this is what I call a first pass mix where I'd uh, go through and kind of put everything I think I'm going to want somewhere in the mix and have some kind of EQ and some kind of compression. And then I usually listen back the next day and go, oh my God, that's horrific. And there's too much of this, too much of that. And then I'll have a tweak about with it. But um, it's nice to use all these... I say all of them, I'm not using that many of them, but I'm using certain T-Rex uh, plugins because they, they do sound great. They've, uh, particularly that, um, that uh, LA-2A simulator. But I think that's, that's really nice. It's a mystery to me. I'm going to cringe now because I'm going to listen to myself singing. And everybody hates their own voice. Um... <clears throat> Well, I'm going to try one of these channel strips. Am I going to do that? Let's try something different. Um, I'm going to try one of these kind of more the... Um, no, I don't want to use that one. I saw one last night I wanted to try. No... Right, let's um, let's just try simple EQ on the vocal, and I want to try the uh, the seventy six, the TR five seventy six. Um, so this is the verse vocal. It's a mystery to me why I shouldn't tell you the way that I'm feeling right now. I thought you should know that I can't seem to find how... That wasn't the EQ I was looking for. 
I'm gonna sleep when my dreams seem to keep you in mind. Let's just go with something like this. To me, why? I shouldn't tell you the way that I'm feeling right now. I thought you should know that I can't seem to find how. I'm gonna sleep when my dreams seem to keep you in mind. I'm one of those people, I wouldn't call myself a singer, but I'm one of those sort of singers that has a lot of low end and, you know, I've, I've um, high passed my vocal at like 400 hertz before. It's a mystery to me why I shouldn't tell you the way that I'm feeling right now. I thought you should know yeah, that I can't whistle, seem man. to find how I'm gonna sleep when my dreams seem to keep you in mind. There's a lower one there as well. I thought you should know that I can't seem to find how. I'm gonna sleep when my dreams seem to keep you in mind. Yeah, it's Feeling cool. right now. I thought you should know that I can't seem to find how. I'm gonna sleep when my dreams seem to keep you in mind. Okay. Um, let's see what it does with the uh, 76 over it. Now this EQ does have an output on it which is useful but not as many bands. So in future maybe I should use this for certain things like the sub bass. See I'm learning. This is good. I'm learning. <clears throat> it's a mystery to me why I shouldn't tell you the way that I'm feeling right now. I thought you should know that I can't seem to find. Well, what's their vocal setting? How? No, I liked what I had. I'm gonna sleep when my dreams seem to keep you in mind. It's a mystery to me. Why? I shouldn't tell you the way that I'm feeling right now. I thought you should know that I can't seem to find how. I'm gonna sleep when my dreams seem to keep you in mind. That's nice. Uh, this is a nice um, 1176 copy. Uh, and I've got the all button pushed in, which is um, basically just really heavily compresses it. I'm a big fan of compression and vocals, particularly my own vocal. Anything that disguises it. <laughs> I thought you should know that I can't seem to find how. I'm gonna sleep when my dreams seem to keep you in mind. Right, I'm just gonna, um, for the sake of uh, making it easy for myself, I'm just gonna copy those over to all the vocal tracks and then just tweak from there, use that as a basis. So I'm copying this EQ over to every single vocal track. And the compressor as well. It's a mystery to me, mind. Why did you go? I feel so low. I got you. So I'm going to pan these two left and right. I don't think these doubles, the double vocal one and two, 
are strictly doubles. I think um, one of them is a copy of the other that I've then done some kind of effects on to try and make it sound like a double. But there's the odd word that's not the same, so I don't know whether it's about a different comp or something. I, I really can't remember what I did. It was about 13 years ago that I sang this. What? Okay, so now, before I go any further, I'm gonna make a group, I call it vocals. I'm just gonna send all the vocals to this. Um, quick tip here, I'm gonna get all of the vocals, all of the channels, like that, I'm gonna link them all very, very quickly, just link them all. And then I'm gonna send them all to vocals and then unlink them again. And now they've all been sent to vocals without me having to do it separately, which if you've got two or three vocals, it's not worthwhile doing, but if you had like 20 vocals, which I've been dealing with something recently that's had that many sort of vocal tracks with BVs and everything, when you've got like 16 BV tracks, it's nice to just group them and send them all in one go. In mind. Why did you go? I feel so Okay, I'm not going to use double vocal two because I'm getting some phasey effect off it because it's a kind of a copy of double vocal one. I think I copied over double vocal one and then put it through some kind of like auto tuner to try and make it sound like a second voice. But whatever I did back in the day, it doesn't sound good enough and I'm just getting some horrible phasing issues. What? Where these two have actually been sung differently. Okay, so what I've got is I've got compressors and EQs on each vocal, but then the group of vocals here, I've actually got um, <clears throat> I've actually got um, an EQ as well. I've gone back to this uh, equal plugin, which is I actually really like, um, and I've got the uh, the two A over the top of it, just compressing the group of vocals. So I'm going to put the two A at the end. And I'm going to put some reverb on this. I'm not going to use sends. I'm going to put some delay and reverb on this. Um, and actually kind of compress that all together. And you'll see what happens. Why did you go? I um, so for a delay, because I don't really want to use the tape delay on this. And I think that's the only... Um, delay I've got from um, from them. So I'm just going to use a simple built into um, built into Cubase, uh, the stereo delay plugin. So every single door, doesn't matter if you're using Pro Tools, Logic, whatever, will have um, something that's similar to this. So I'm just going to put sort of like a 250. I don't necessarily want it to be in time. Um, I'm just going to put a bit of delay each side maybe a, a kind of like a 7% mix. And I'm going to roll up the low to sort of like 300 hertz on each of them. Um, pull down the feedback to 40. Just put a bit of delay on these vocals. I feel so low, I got it wrong. And then <laughs> reverb. Now you've returned one thing I've learned I got you wrong. Right, that's distorting nicely going into there, isn't it? Um Again Why did you 
Okay, so I need to turn the level down coming into my vocal group, which is understandable because I've got three vocals going there at the moment. So I'm just going to take it all down by 5 dB. Girl, I feel so love. I got it wrong. Take a bit of low end out the reverb. Again, now you've returned. One thing I've learned, I got it wrong. That's cool. Right, so now I've got some backing vocals here. So these two are the top ones, so I can pan them quite a bit. So I'll pan them at, what was that, 53. And then I've got that one, which is a bit lower. I'll bring that down because I want to feature the high ones. So let me group those two channels together. So if I pull one down, it's going to pull them both down together. Still just missing a bit of clarity on the top end of the vocals, so they just sound a little bit muddier than I want them to sound. Why did you go? I feel so low. I got it wrong again now. Lovely, yeah, with the CLA-2A. And then when 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 you hear the vocal, um, you don't get all the reverb and delay so much. And then when the vocal stops, the compressor is bringing up all the... Well, really, what's happening is it's turning it down when I'm singing. And then when I stop singing, it, it kind of turns it back up again. And you hear all the reverb and delay kind of swelling. Dreams seem to keep you in mind. Okay, so I'm just going to automate on this. I don't want any reverb or um, delay at the beginning. So um, what I'm going to do here is bring up the delay and the reverb plugin. I'm going to bypass them both and then hit on the right button on both of them. So that dream seem to keep you in mind. Now that's I'm automated. Sleep for my dream seem to keep you in mind. Why did you go? I feel so love. I got you 
Right, I'm just going to quickly check these backing vocals in the second verse, and I'm going to have a listen through to the middle eight vocals. Um, what am I doing there? Um, that's in there. I'm just checking they're all in. Those guitars now need to come up to match the vocal in between. I'm just going to turn my vocals up a little bit in the waves so they're hitting the uh, EQ and the compressor a bit more. over compressed now I've gone too far the other way and I'm getting a lot of this at the top end so no I'm not hearing it's not a whistle then is it Maybe I just need a, a low pass really at the top end just to round off some of that sibilance and stuff. <laughs> Again, go for the music group, turn it all down. something there in the vocals I think my ears are getting tired but I'm hearing something that I can't find <laughs>
just me. get to that point where I want to turn the treble up on everything, <laughs> which uh, usually says to me that my ears are starting to get a bit tired. too much delay. I reduced that back to 5% on each side, I think. <clears throat> also high cut, um, yeah, high, um, low past the uh, delays. <laughs> The tension that we are let you affect me now. I can't find the words to a sound so obsessed. When I mention you've been in dreams that are. Right, there is a load that I'd want to do to this in a second pass, but realistically I need um, a break from it. So I'm just going to very quickly go to the stereo out of the whole thing, because um, there is so much more I want to do. Um, but I'm just going to run one of their plugins. I was actually on a on a stream last night with um, Dave Kersner talking about called the Master Match. Um, in fact, I'm going to load up their EQ as well. Um, no, I'll load up the master match. I want to load up the uh, the Portek clone as well. I'm just going to use these two quickly just to show them. So let's say, you know, this is a, a roughish mix at the moment. I've got the files in, got some EQs on stuff. I'm certainly not at any point where I'm, I'm completely happy with the mix or anything like that, but it's sounding a lot better than an unmixed track. Um, let's say I just want to send it to someone. Um, you could use this plugin just to kind of even it all out and make it sound um, a bit nicer because um, it kind of matches the EQ from one song to another. Uh, so, But first I'm going to use the, uh, the Portek EQ on it. So same as I did on the drums, I'm just attenuating and boosting in that 30 hertz region. Um, and then I'm going to come down to probably 10k there. I'm going to attenuate a bit and again boost. I'd be 
be tempted to actually use two of these and play with the top end and um, bottom end in two ways, but I'm not going to now. Um, I'm going to load one of their presets. I've never done this before, so I'm just going to load one of their presets and see. I'm going to go for modern rock and see what this makes the song sound like if I just run this over the whole mix. certainly louder um, and it does what's it doing here so if I turn that up so you can see it's kind of adding me a bit more kind of 50 60 Hertz in I'm not sure I agree with that um, but yeah it's cutting some of the mud around here it's giving me a little bit of a boost around 800 I was cutting 800 out of a lot of things but um, seems to want to put it back in across the board which is fair enough a um, little bit of a boost around 3k cut down here yeah that's um, that's nice. It, it sounds pretty good. So um, I'm just going to play the whole thing through because I need to end this stream. So I'm just going to play the whole thing through from start to finish and see where we're at. And I will come back on another stream and um, finish this off or do something different with it. But I hope uh, you've seen some of the, uh, you know, a few of the TR5 plugins um, that I've discovered so far, and no doubt in my future screen, uh, my scream streams, I will be um, in my future screams. I will be uh, trying out some new TR5 plugins as well. Um, yeah, I'm I'm very impressed with them. Very impressed with them. Um, be interesting to see how this sounds, even though it's rough to the original one. Anyway, I'm waffling. I waffle far too much. So I'm going to mute my mic and we'll play from start to finish. Here we go. It's a mystery to me why I shouldn't tell you the way that I'm feeling right now I thought you should know that I can't seem to find how I'm gonna sleep but my dreams seem to keep you in mind
Well, for a first pass mix, I don't think that's too bad. I mean, there's going to be loads that I'll uh, want to change about that, but I think I did what I wanted to do, um, learn and try out some of these uh, T-Rex um, plugins, which, um, yeah, I'm very impressed. I'm particularly um, impressed with their um, LA-2A simulator. That's sounding really, really nice. Um, so I'm going to start using that more in my general mixing. Um, and I was quite impressed with what the master match did at the end just there. It kind of glued everything together quite nicely. I mean, there are other things I'd usually do to do that, but um, I think that worked pretty well. If I'd had this kind of technology back when I was running a studio, when I was um, in my 20s, I would have been over the moon with it. So, uh, yeah, very, very good. Um, so this song is available to download in a uh, multi-track, or at least it will be about two or three minutes after the um, stream. Uh, if you are watching on a watch party somewhere else, if you go to the High Pass Shows page um, and find my post about this video, you will um, be able to download the multi-track so that you can play about with it yourself. Please, please um, send me the mixes. I'd love to hear whatever you do. Um, and I'm going to come back to this another time. So thank you so much for watching, all of you that have uh, stayed with me. This has been a long stream, two and a bit hours. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you so much. And uh, see you soon.